So I've been seeing a lot of talk from Star Wars fans who are talking about they're going to boycott the Han Solo movie. And it doesn't make sense to me. Why do you have Star Wars fans who hate Star Wars? What's up, Urban Acolyte Army? My name is Prince, and I'm an Urban Acolyte. And in this video, I want to respond to some of these YouTube videos I've been seeing popping up that are talking about why you should boycott the Han Solo movie. Now, if you're new here, I talk about Star Wars, uh, superhero and action movies, and uh, all kinds of things related to martial arts because Star Wars got me into martial arts and meditation. So that's part of being an urban acolyte. So if you like this kind of thing, you wanna join this crazy urban acolyte army, make sure you click subscribe and enable notifications so that you know when I'm posting new videos. But anyway, let's get to the topic of this video of why people are talking about boycotting the Han Solo movie. Like, it seems like the more we get, uh, the, the more the marketing machine gets going as we get to the end of the month, the release date of the Han Solo movie. I'm seeing more of this boycott Solo. I hope this movie fails. This movie should fail. It's going to be a train wreck, right? Look what happened with Lord and Miller. They got fired and Alden Ehrenreich's acting is going to suck. They brought in an acting coach and I don't like Lando um, being played by Donald Glover. Only Billy D is Lando. And I don't like the recasting of Harrison Ford. They need to, they, they should have CGI'd Harrison Ford. And I'm like, wait a minute. First off, Alden Ehrenreich is young Han Solo, right? Harrison Ford picks up with Han Solo when he's like in his 30s, right? Because Harrison Ford was in his 30s when he played the character in A New Hope. It's my understanding that this movie ends 10 years before that time. So what are you saying? They said they should CGI, that Harrison Ford should have played the role at 70 something. They should CGI his face and make him look younger, right? And then what about his voice? So should they, uh, uh, digitally, digitally enhance his voice, take clips from American Graffiti and, and use that version of Harrison Ford's voice. And then, well, he walks like a 70 year old man. He broke his leg filming uh, when he was crashed his airplane during The Force Awakens. So what about he walks and moves like a 70 year old man? Uh, oh, well, they, they can bring in his stunt double whenever he has to get up and walk and move around. Well, if you're gonna re replace his face you know, with uh, with visual effects in post production, and you're gonna change his voice in visual with visual effects in post production, and you're gonna bring in a, a younger person whenever he has to move or do any action scenes, then why not just bring in a completely new actor and save yourself the money and the time, right? But these these Star Wars fans who hate Star Wars and hate what the Disney vacation of Star Wars never think rationally. And this is my gripe. It is easier to bitch about a problem than to offer a solution, right? And the solution is, look, this is not the Han Solo. This person is not Han Solo that we're used to. It's not Harrison Ford Han Solo. This is the person who is becoming that person, right? Just like, uh, Childish Gambino, Donald Glover is the person who becomes, hey baby, drink your Coke 45, right? Is the person who becomes the Billy D. Williams Lando Calrissian, right? They're, they're, they're not trying to do an imitation. This is who these people are on their journey to becoming the people that we come, we have come to know and to love. Now, my thing is if you're a Star Wars fan, why, why, what's up with the resistance to change, right? Because I'm not attached to Harrison Ford as Han Solo. It's not my Han Solo. It's not my Lando. Well, if you read the books, then yes, when I read anything about Han Solo, I picture Harrison Ford, but then I look at the comic books and not all the comic book depictions look like Harrison Ford. They look like Han Solo, right? Um, when you go and see a play, you, you, you might have your favorite play and the same actor and actress 
who portrays that person that one time you saw that play that you loved when you go and see it 20 years later or two years later or even maybe two weeks later it's not the same actor but I understand this is Star Wars some of these movies we get attached to people but what about James Bond right now we're saying well James Bond 007 is not an actual person it's a name and everyone who who uh uh, becomes D Agent 007, takes on the name James Bond. That's how we're going to rationalize if James Bond is ever a woman or ever uh, a black guy, you know, played by uh, Idris Elba or something like that. But we've had multiple actors play James Bond, right? After, uh, who is it, Daniel Craig? After he, after this next movie, I think this is his last time as James Bond, and then they'll replace the role, right? I'm hoping Scott Adkins will get a shot at it, even though, you know, he, he might be close to 50 by the time that happens. But we'll see. He's in great shape. Um, so I, I really, I don't understand this. It's like, Oh, I love Star Wars, but oh, I don't like this Star Wars. Oh, I think Kathleen Kennedy should be fired because the story groups up. And I mean, that that's another. There was a video by one guy. Yeah, I guess he's uh, he does like entrepreneurial stuff and he's a writer. I was subscribed. I was shocked that I'm subscribed to his channel, but I think somebody suggested I subscribe for the entrepreneurship, the business tips he gives. And he also does Star Wars and he had went into this long spiel about why Kathleen Kennedy should be fired. And I'm like, look, Kathleen Kennedy makes business decisions. She writes checks. Right. If it's an issue with the story, if it's an issue with the direction where Star Wars is going, Kathleen Kennedy is just the boss lady. So why are you talking about she should be fired? Replace her with Dave Filoni. Dave Filoni is a director. He's a creative person. Right. You want to put a creative person in a business spot, a person who makes who's an, very analytically minded. Right. George Lucas. I, I'd like to think that he knew what he was doing when he put Kathleen Kennedy in that place when he, you know, did the things he did. And this is very important because the Han Solo project started, I think, in 2012 before George Lucas or maybe earlier than that. Uh, I, I got my dates all messed up, but yeah, I think George, I, yeah, I don't think George Lucas had quite retired in 2012. And Lawrence Kasten said, look, we started working on this when George was still calling the shots. So, you know, I, I don't know how many times I can say this. I've said it every, it seems like every time I touch on this topic, I say it, that George had kind of a list of things that he was, he was like, well, you know, guys, I would like it if you can, if you can get around to it, if you try to do this. And a young Han Solo movie was one of those things George Lucas wanted, right? And now we're learning that the sequel saga actually has been influenced heavily by ideas that George Lucas had that he wrote up in an outline or synopsis or something if he had done the sequel saga. So, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't know, man. I, I like, I know I get, I, I, I piss people off when I do this and I'm kind of not caring anymore. Right. This is, this is my medium to share my opinions. Right. But I see star Wars fans that complain about stuff. And it's like, it, it's completely irrational, right? You hated The Force Awakens, bring back George Lucas. And then you really hated The Last Jedi, bring back George Lucas. And then boom, what, what do we find out? The hammer gets dropped. Oh, George Lucas was going to kill Luke, but he was going to do it in episode nine. And George Lucas was going to have a female coming of age story, a, a young woman's coming of age story in his sequel saga, right? And that's what we get. And a whole lot of stuff that we that we're seeing in the sequel saga, this is what George was gonna do, but it was gonna be more pomp and circumstance, right? <laughs> more in your face, you know, stuff, all right? More wow visual effects. Uh, it, it was stuff that George was gonna do, and we just did it. We took his idea and did it a little bit different. Same thing, but different, right? Han Solo, George Lucas's idea. Everything that we're getting, probably until. 2021 for the next everything that we've gotten except for rogue one came from an idea george lucas even star wars rebels george lucas wanted to do a live action 
um, series about the growing rebellion, the Jedi being hunted down, and it was going to focus around Saw Gerrera. And uh, what did Dave Filoni do? He made it animated. He flipped it on its head. But eventually the rebels encounter Saw Gerrera, right? And then Saw Gerrera leaves his fingerprints all over, you know, Rogue One, right? Jyn Erso was, <coughs> sorry, was raised sort of as Saw Gerrera's daughter. If you've read uh, uh, the, 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 I can't even, Rebel Rising, right? That book, right? And here, I mean, this is this is where I'm gonna leave off. If you if you say you love Star Wars, you need to be very clear on what Star Wars is to you. When you say you love Star Wars, are you talking about the comic books? Are you talking about the EU, the old Star Wars, which is no longer canon? And I know this this is the Revenge of Sith, the the, the prequel trilogy novel, which is a form of canon, but not like. The, the 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 new stuff coming out. I don't have any physical books of the new stuff that's come out because all of it's on my Kindle or, or on my on my phone or I read it on my desktop PC. Are you talking about the animated shows? Are you talking about only the movies? Right. And in uh, two more years. Uh, yeah, I think starting 2020, probably after episode nine wraps up. So I, if, if it's coming, I'd say the fall 2020, we're probably going to have the Disney app and, uh, this, this new animated show might get moved. It might stay on Disney XD. It'll probably be on that app too. The live action stuff that's coming, uh, no, they might make, uh, movies that don't go to the big screen movies for the small screen. That'll probably be on the new Disney app. There's going to be Star Wars everything. Is that what you mean when you say you love Star Wars, right? And I'm saying all of that because it's all on one timeline. It's all canon, right? So everything we get gives us bigger parts of the story, right? More story. And so when you say, oh, I don't like this, I don't want to see this, but it's all giving us a bigger picture of the story. Now I'm ready for them to move on beyond the Skywalker saga, beyond all the stuff related to Anakin and the rebellion. And, and now we've got the resistance, right? I'm ready to move on and let's see stuff that happened with the old Republic and let's see things in a new part of space, right? Other force wielders who aren't Jedi, because I totally believe that's being set up. Where is Ezra Bridger? Where is Ahsoka going? What are they doing? Have they encountered other force wielders? What are their adventures about, right? Can we do that in the on the live screen or will that stay strictly animated? Where, where, where is that story going? I would love to see that. But we've got to wrap up what we've got related to the Skywalker saga, related to the original saga and the sequel saga. And the more stuff we get from that timeline, it actually gives us more story. I firmly believe that Han Solo will set up things related to Kylo Ren and his ongoing story, right? I firmly believe that, right? Seeing Corellia, seeing these new planets introduced, new characters, uh, the underworld, which sets up the possibility of creating uh, a Star Wars 1313 series that specifically deals with the underworld and the bounty hunters, the swoop gangs, the, the, the other cartels beside the Nitco cartel and the Hut cartel. If you want all of that, this Han Solo movie is the perfect place to do it. So you guys, y'all really need to chill, man. You really need to chill and see the bigger picture, right? Stop getting in your feelings. That's hard to do because some of you Star Wars fans who hate Star Wars, some of y'all got some estrogen dominance problems, right? So you can't help it. So optimize your hormones, pull your head out of your butts, and look, if you, I don't know, if you want to boycott the movie, do you, boo, but I'm going to see it. I got my ticket for May 24th at 7 p.m. I'm going to see it, and I'm going to talk about it here on YouTube, and whether I get 500 views, 5,000 or 50,000 or 5 million, I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to talk about Star Wars the way I talk about Star Wars for whoever wants to hear it, and I'm going to live my life and train my Kung Fu and be happy and not worry about people who don't like what I like, right? Uh, but I'm going to leave you guys with one question. Are you going to see Han Solo or are you going to boycott it? 
Will you see it the first weekend or are you going to wait because you, you want to see it, but you don't want to support whatever Disney's trying to do. So you wait till after opening weekend or maybe you just, you know, you can't see it until the time when you can see it. So I want to hear, you know, do you plan to see it and win down in the comments below? If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, click that subscribe button and take your first steps towards joining the Urban Acolyte Army. Embark on the journey of becoming the hero of your own story and become a force for change in your community. Continue to support this channel by sharing the videos and checking out more stuff. Maybe you haven't seen some of the recent videos I've been posting. So check those out. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for hanging out. Y'all keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you always.